Welcome. This is a video for our Math 123 at a Distance students who are taking our online synchronous version of the course. Uh, this video is just to show students where some things are at in our course shell. This may vary from course to course as your teacher may make a few changes or we may make a few changes as the semesters continue. For the spring 2019 version, your course should look somewhat like this. All right, so let's follow the instructions here and get started by clicking on the syllabus start here button. Of course, you can also get to all of these syllabus and modules by using the links on the left as well. Okay, I'm not going to read through the syllabus because that is a student's responsibility, uh, but I will point out some important things. One, your instructor should put their name and information here. If your course has started and your instructor has not done that yet, you might want to shoot them a message and let them know. If your instructor information is not listed here, you can find them in the people as the person who's labeled as the teacher for the course. I will point out that this course does have weighted grades, so you can see the the category weights over here on the right. If you don't really know what that means, don't worry. We're going to talk more about that in section six of our textbook. Okay, as I said, students should read through this, be familiar with the course policies. Okay, we did, one thing I did want to point out is how the textbook for this course works. This is what's called an included course, and that means that your course packet will be mailed to you at your home address. If for some reason you have not yet received your course packet, uh, I've included some information here and in the first announcement of the course on how to contact the bookstore uh, for any issues with that. Okay, I will try to call it a course packet and not a textbook because uh, it's really fill in the blank notes. So you should receive a, a loose leaf packet with cover something like this. And as you start to look through it, you'll find that, as I said, it's really fill in the blank notes that if you are in a face to face class, you would spend your class period filling out some of these questions together. All right, so let's explore a little bit how you're going to handle having a primarily online course. So if I go back out to the home page. Our homepage has several buttons on this front page, but again, you can access uh, much of this material throughout the course. The first row of buttons are some resources that are going to help you. So how are you going to learn this material? Well, there are course videos for every page of your, your course packet. There are these Google slides with answers to the pages of your course packet. And then we call this at a distance course as opposed to an online course because there will be a synchronous session component. So one or two hours a week, depending on how your class is scheduled, you will log on to GoToMeeting or GoToTraining and you will meet with your teacher and your classmates to help you learn the material. Okay, but you only meet for an hour a week if it's a 16 week course. And that's really not enough time to teach everything that's in the course. So just like in any online course, you're going to be responsible for doing a lot of the learning outside of that synchronous time. Okay, this course is broken into eight modules. So these buttons down here have everything that we're going to do in the course in them. And again, you can also get to modules uh, over here on the left. So whichever you prefer. Okay, we've designed the course so that people who are teaching in eight weeks have convenient eight modules. For those taking it in 16 weeks, just keep in mind that you're probably going to spend two weeks on each of these modules. Okay, so a typical module has a list of things for us to complete and a variety of resources to help us complete um, those objectives. Okay, so I'll actually start in the module like I'm supposed to with the overview. So in module one, we're going to cover sections one, two, and three of the textbook. They have a checklist of objectives for this module. So I know most students don't actually read this, but wouldn't hurt you to read through that. Okay, then there's always this page that has links to our course packet. So if you haven't received your course packet yet, or you're trying to do everything from the computer, there are PDF links to all the course packet pages throughout the course. 
Okay, as I said, we have Google Slides and videos to help you learn that material. So Google Slide is like a PowerPoint. And if you are taking face to face, your teacher might pull these up during class and go through them. In your synchronous session, the teacher might pick a few of these slides to go over in your one hour synchronous course. Okay, but these PowerPoints, these Google Slides, they don't really always tell us how uh, the person came up with these answers. So for that, I would recommend checking out the videos. We have links to the videos throughout the course, throughout the homework, and also uh, that, that front link on the first page will take you to this, this video playlist where you can look at each chapter and pick from a variety of videos uh, to find whatever it is that you are looking for. So no reason to uh, not to be able to fill out those pages because there's more links to the videos here within the module. And you can watch those as needed. You can fill out the course packet as needed. If you come to topics that you already feel like you have a good understanding, then you can go straight into trying the homework. Okay, other things that are in our modules. In almost every module, you'll be asked to do a discussion board. Uh, this first one's pretty easy. Introduce yourself and reply to a couple other classmates. And for each section of the textbook, there will be homework. Okay, there are going to be two types of homework. One is web work homework. So hopefully your instructor has set up your web work. There should actually be a button here once the course is set up that will take you to this web work online homework site. And so here's one of my previous courses. And there's basically section homework for every section of the textbook. The orientation is optional. You don't have to do it, but that would be a great place to get started to explore a little bit. And once again, we have the videos are linked off here to the right. If you feel like you're stuck or need to watch some of the videos as you're trying the homework. And most of the homework questions are just kind of fill in your answers. So there's some kind of warm up questions here in this this first homework, just getting you to remember converting fractions to decimals, things like that. If I click on the section two homework header, it takes me back out to the list. I wanted to point out that most questions are set to unlimited. So you can try the problem as many times as you like. It will give you a green check when you have it correct. It will give you a red X if you're not correct. Now, even though these are set to unlimited, uh, I, most instructors probably set it so that after you have five misses, then you are going to need to uh, try the problem again with new numbers. And some questions do have limits like these multiple choice questions. Well, because they're multiple choice, we're only going to give you three chances on some of these, right? So don't waste your attempts by guessing that it's the wrong answer over and over again. You know, pay attention when you submit the answers. If it says B is incorrect, then B is incorrect. So you shouldn't be guessing anyway. You should be using your quantitative reasoning skills to answer the questions. Your instructor will probably set up due dates for those, so pay attention to when things are due and if there are late penalties and how long they're going to let you work on the homework. For my courses, typically, uh, I allow students uh, to work on the homework to a certain date, then work on it for half credit through the test date, but your instructor is going to set that up according to their policies. So that's kind of your day-to-day -day homework. That's one type of homework. So you're going to have that in every module. So module one here is going to have links for sections one, two, and three. Or two and three, I think one and two are together. Okay, after you've done the homework, um, there are quizzes in, in five out of the eight modules. There's either a quiz or an exam in each one of the modules. So in five of the modules, there are these quizzes. These are through Ivy Learn, and these are set to two attempts. And my recommendation is that students take their first attempt somewhat early in the week, wait to get instructor feedback, and then take their second attempt. After your first attempt, the quiz will tell you what you missed. Uh, the second attempt is going to give you similar problems, but it will often give you new numbers for the questions, so don't think that you can cheat and memorize the answers because the second attempt is going to look slightly different. But then we're going to take the highest score. Uh, your instructor should also be checking these quizzes because the computer is going to grade it to the best of its ability 
but it is a computer. So sometimes, let's say the answer to a question is four, but a student typed 4.0 and the computer didn't recognize that as four. I know that's very frustrating, but your instructor should come back in and give you credit for those when the computer messes that up. But you might have to be patient for the instructor to have a chance to go in and check the quizzes. Um, so don't wait to the last minute to do your attempts so you can get feedback. Okay, also in each module, you're going to have your synchronous session. So ideally, the instructor is going to put a link to that in this button on the home page. But initially, the instructor is going to probably send you a link to register for a go-to meeting or go-to training or something similar, whatever synchronous session they've chosen to use. But go-to meeting and go-to training are kind of our standard ones. The first time you log on to GoToTraining, it takes a couple of minutes to download the app. So try and log on maybe 10, 15 minutes early for your first session so you can get everything set up. Okay, once you get in, this is basically the screen that you're going to see. It's very simple to use. Uh, your instructor will share their screen there and will typically share PowerPoints or pages from the course and you will work problems together. It's very helpful if you've previewed the material and tried the homework questions before you go to the synchronous session so that you can get the most out of those synchronous sessions. Uh, some tools will be over here on the right. Please mute yourself when you're not talking so people don't have to listen to you coughing and typing and things like that. There's an option to raise your hand so your teacher can kind of see you. But the most common thing that students use in the course is this chat box. So while we recommend that you might want to get a microphone for the course to participate, oftentimes students will just use the chat box. So when you click on that chat box, it will open a chat window. And a lot of the course discussion usually goes on in that chat window in my classes. But certainly students can use their microphones as well. A okay, couple other things in the course. Um, another type of homework that we're going to have is some Excel homework. So in module two, we start to get some Excel assignments. First one's pretty easy. You're going to make a pie chart. So actually, let me go into the student view real quick. Okay, so there's some instructions. You can either preview this uh, Word document or if you click on the link, it will download it. So this one's pretty simple. We basically just want you to take this list of data and create an Excel file that has a pie chart and then you're gonna make some comments on it. If you don't know how to do that, again, we put a video in here for you to make it really easy and there are book pages that have step-by-step -step instructions. If you need more help than that, check out the tutors. Um, at your campus for some help with that. Okay, and these type of assignments, you click on the submit button and you can attach some files, multiple files actually, uh, if you want to add multiple files for some reason. Uh, you can also put comments on here. I hope you can read this. That comment's not really necessary, but you can put comments on there. Okay, please submit your files as Word files and Excel files. If you're using a spreadsheet different than Excel, like Google Sheets, or you have a MacBook with numbers, that'll probably be okay. Just export the file as an Excel file so that your instructor can read those files. Okay, so you also have some assignments like that. You can also get to your assignments via the assignment link on the left there. Might be more convenient than going into the modules each time, but it's really a preference of how you like to navigate the course. Also, once the course gets started, you will have to-do list on the home page every time you come in. There'll be a, a link of things for you to do over there on the right. Yet another convenient way to get to your assignments. In addition to assignments, we are going to have three projects that are basically like big, I'm sorry, two projects um, that are basically like big, bigger assignments where you have to turn in an Excel file and a Word document. Okay, we're also going to have three tests in the course. Uh, before each test, in addition to the test, you are going to be required to complete a review quiz. So this is a longer online review quiz that all students for the course complete before each test. It's really a great way to practice for your tests. 
Um, and this one, you get as many attempts as you would like. So just follow the link to that review quiz. There's about 20 questions in it, so they are longer. After you submit the 20 questions, it's going to tell you what you missed, and then you can take it over and over again. It's going to give you a slightly different version each time, but we're going to take the highest score. So that is the best way to prepare for your tests. Okay, the tests are the one thing that you have to come to campus for. We do have proctored exams in this course. So I was looking for that information in our syllabus. Go, proctored exams. So for this, you will schedule an appointment with Ivy Tech's testing centers, and you can go to any Ivy Tech location, whatever testing center is closest to you, and um, they will log you in to the exam in your Ivy Learn course, and you will complete that through Ivy Learn. If for some reason you're not able to come to Ivy Tech location because you're out of state or out of the country, then you will need to work with your instructor to set up an alternative proctoring site like ProctorU uh, or something else. But ideally, yes, you do have to come to campus to take those tests. But you can really take them at your convenience within the deadline that your instructor sets. Okay, so those are, that's about everything I think you need to know for the course. Um, I also want to point out that you do have to do something in the first week or so of the course, especially if it's an eight-week course. You must complete a meaningful assignment in the first week, or we will drop you from the course and not let you back in. So complete a homework assignment, complete a discussion board and go to your synchronous session because I think you will find that will help you to be successful in the course.